Legionnaires. If you haven't seen Code Geass Seasons 1 and 2, Lelouch of the Rebellion, I order you to do so. IMMEDIATELY! Oh my goodness, guys, I am so excited to sit here and talk to you today about, I think, potentially my favorite anime of all time. I know, Blasphemous, how crazy is this guy? Well, Code Geass was a show I came into contact with a while ago, and I've watched it twice over now, and I gotta tell you, this show is a wild ride, it's gripping, and the episodes feel like they go by in the blink of an eye. So, for people who don't know about Code Geass, or Lelouch, who you might have seen in actually the thumbnails for these videos, uh, it's this really crazy show that kind of takes place in a uh, alternate version of Earth. In this version, basically the Britannian Empire has taken over everything, and most of the battles and skirmishes you see here are in Japan. Now, it's kind of set in a modern time, but most of the stuff you see are, as far as like military goes, it's like futuristically like, kind of mechs, sort of Gundam-esque, just a little bit. I'm also not a huge like mech anime fan, maybe I just haven't watched the right ones yet. I have seen a few, like All No Zero, I kind of liked its smaller one, but uh, the, the mech fighting in here, it's, it's so very like almost Naruto anime fights. It's very like, uh, it's very different. These machines move like ninjas, basically, and it's really cool and fun to watch. However, that's not the main draw of the show, even though that stuff is incredible. The nightmares, that's what these mechs are called, are so much fun to watch, run around the battlefield and the different formats and versions of them and how the characters talk about the new versions or they, you know, they upgraded this portion of it and all that stuff. It's wonderful. The thing that it really comes down to, for me, are the characters. And I, and I know so many people probably watching this are like, how dare he not watch the sub? I've watched the dub both times. The English dub for this is fan fantastic. Uh, the two lead characters of Lelouch, Lamperouge, and Suzaku Kururugi are played by some like incredibly well-known and talented voice actors in that of Johnny Youngbosch, and then we also have Yuri Lowenthal. You guys might know uh, Johnny from doing stuff like Nero from Devil May Cry, or Ichigo from Bleach, and then you've got Yuri Lowenthal, who's Sasuke from Naruto, or also Spider-Man from the new Spider-Man games among a many, a myriad of other games and movies and things like that. But it's this conflict between these two. Lelouch Lamperouge is this uh, young teenager who's actually a prince of the Britannian Empire, but he's kind of hiding out in Japan with his sister, Nanali. And they have this best friend, or he does, and that of Suzaku Kudurugi, who is this guy who eventually becomes part of the Britannian Empire, even though I believe that he is originally Japanese. There's a lot of this kind of like, if you're born Japanese, you shouldn't fight for the Britannians and vice versa. Uh, what happens eventually here is that Lelouch gets this ability, this power that you saw me use at the beginning of the video here, of Gias from this individual called C2. Now for those who are, you know, kind of familiar, especially with like Naruto, with like kind of using eyes as an ability or a special kind of order or command, there's kind of a similarity here, but the, the stringent rules of the show and how different Gios work, because if you get a Gios, if we both got a Gios, it'd probably be different for both of us, this special power. I really enjoy that aspect because it's it's very uh, very specific and straightforward for the most part. Usually in Naruto, they'll introduce something and then it'll have a power that's got a power on top of a power and a power. Although that show is hundreds and hundreds of episodes long, uh, thankfully with um, Code Geass, it's just two seasons right now. I have not seen the movie, I'm so sorry about that, there's a, there's a movie that's following up all of this stuff, and then there's also an in-between uh, series of shows that kind of take place about what Britannia did to take over Europa, and I have not seen that portion yet, I'm so sorry. So I'm just talking about seasons one and two here, so if people really like this, then I can go try to find those and we can talk about those later. Anyway, this kind of... Um, interesting rebellion breaks out because Lelouch, kind of being this exiled prince of Britannia, his father Charles v. Britannia, who's kind of trying to take over the entire world, he's kind of living um, in exile just kind of secretively, but he gets this power and he starts his own revolution, this kind of terrorist group known as the Black Knights. And he wears a mask so nobody knows who he is because if they knew that he was actually like of Britannian descent and he was like a prince, they'd be like, oh, he's just doing this as like a coup for power. But his Gios has the ability, he can only do this once to an individual, but he can look at you and he can command you to do anything. He could command you to go, you know, 
pick up the mail. He could go command you to make him some food. He could, like, command you to kill yourself. So, he can only use this once on a person, so that makes it kind of interesting about how he has to manipulate and use this power to his advantage. It's really, really cool to watch him work, and he's also like this kind of chess master, so normally in fights and stuff he might get in a nightmare of his own, but he'll kind of sit in the back and he'll kind of play out the chess match with his, his units, his pawns, his knights, and things like that. Uh, which kind of brings us into Colin, one of his schoolmates who is actually part, who becomes part of the terrorist group, the Black Knights, and she doesn't know that uh, Lelouch is actually the leader, even though there's a little bit, there's kind of a suspect, uh, there's like some moments where it's like, oh, he could be, couldn't be. It's one of those things where like, it's a kid in high school who a lot of people are like, you're probably that superhero, but we're not going to say anything about it. And that's kind of the, the thing here. But Colin is all just so cool. She's like this incredibly strong fighter. She gets this great, uh, she's good even outside of the mech. She's like incredibly fast and powerful. Like they don't really explain it too much. She just has martial arts training and she can like, you throw something at her and she will just like, she'll wipe her hand down and it'll just like, and it'll like just disintegrate a thing. Like if you threw a rock at her, she'd be like, boop, and I don't know. But anyway, you put her in a nightmare and uh, she is like a living nightmare. She's this crazy crimson clad goddess on the battlefield and she's fantastic. Uh, but it's really interesting because this show, while a lot of it takes place out on the battlefield in these various places around the Earth, the other half a lot, especially in the first season, takes place back at the high school. There's a good um, amount that takes place there in season two, but for some odd reason season one does this kind of balance of like this, uh, it's almost Persona-esque where, you know, you've got um, Lelouch who's moonlighting as this like super terrorist and trying to build up his forces, but then during the day he's like a normal, like, school student and there's a lot of like school drama that happens and his classmates and he's kind of he's on the student council and like it's just it's so much fun to watch like the drama unfold on different levels and the characterization of everybody involved there isn't really like an annoying or super bad character in the bunch there's a few minor ones which might grate on you a little but they're not around too much uh, but i just love watching him kind of have to deal with his like work and school life uh and then kind of dealing with um it's very anime in that, like, every, almost every woman in the show kind of, like, is in love with Lelouch. Not every one of them is, but uh, Shirley, who is kind of, like, this moral center of the show, a little bit, uh, along with Nanali, uh, who just loves Lelouch, and Lelouch kind of doesn't have the time day for her, just doesn't know until later on. Uh, but her character gets developed uh, as well, and it's just, it's so... It's so interesting how they build up that relationship, and then Suzaku Kururugi ends up coming and joining the student council and being at the school as well. So you have these people who are kind of like, they're friends in you know the daytime, but then at night they come to blows on the battlefield, and they don't necessarily know that, even though Lelouch is pretty aware that uh, you know Suzaku eventually kind of climbs the ranks and gets his own nightmare, the Lancelot, which is this just like destructive, beautiful, like ivory machine of death and <laughs> flying around the battlefield ripping people apart and it looks so good the hand-drawn animation here is something that i just i really can't get over obviously that's pretty much all anime unless you're going to the computer generated or something like that but this is a little bit of an older anime it's not like cowboy bebop old or something like that but you can tell it's a little bit dated but it doesn't feel that way like i know it sounds weird for me to say that you can you can tell it's a little older it may be some of i don't know if it's like the audio or something like that but there's still such a high quality there. It really just brings you along. And just the insane, like, storylines and moments that come out of all of it. Oh my gosh. It's just like every episode feels like a cliffhanger. Like, you just want to watch the next one and the next one and the next one. Uh, there are... I could sit here and talk about the characters all day. I mentioned Nanali earlier, who is kind of um, it, the, the anchoring point for Lelouch. And she is his little sister, she happens to be blind, and he kind of takes care of her, and she's always kind of wondering where she's going. It kind of makes it a little more convenient, uh, so that way he can kind of slip in and out. Uh, but you find out later on that there is a reason why she's blind. Uh, because of some trauma in the past, or maybe some other things that have happened. I don't want to spoil all of it right now. <laughs> but, uh... It just, there's so, I just think back to these moments where, like, Lelouch uses his intelligence to overcome obstacles. His Gios is definitely a trump card, but at the same time, he can't use it on everyone forever. And some people he uses it on kind of, like, get chastised for the rest of their lives because of it, even though they didn't want to be part of it. One of my favorite characters, who's a little annoying at first, but he becomes so funny to me, is Jeremiah Gottwald, who, or Gutwald, who's played by the one Crispin Freeman. 
he's so good. And uh, Lelouch uses his Gios on him to get him to do something for him. And then later on, it's just like, that's become a part of who he is then later in like, you know, subsequent episodes. But then you find that he's got loyalties to Lelouch's mother. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, that's maybe like a minor spoiler, but there, it just, it all comes together in such a beautiful, intricate way. And then you have people like Schneisel, who's uh, Lelouch's older brother, who is like the chess master master. So like, this is like when they come to meet finally on the battlefield, it's very much like a big chess match. And I love anime that isn't just like, I'm the main protagonist, I'm the strongest, I'm just gonna punch my way through eventually. And I love that, you know, the power of friendship, that's great, wonderful. But in this one, it's very tragic um, and very tactical, and it's not gonna it's not gonna make you feel the best all the time. And a lot of the relationships that get set up here are because of crazy extenuating circumstances where people, you might fall in love with one another, but then they find out that they're on opposite sides, you know, kind of West Side Story, uh, or those relationships you wanna see continue just get cut short because of other reasons. You know, it, it's such an interesting show that can make you feel a ton of different things, and because of that dynamic, that dichotomy you have between the school stuff, which is so fun and lighthearted, and then the battlefield stuff, which is just like tragic, um, but also really invests you in the drama of it all, it's so wonderful. Uh, and then eventually you get these like other groups from around the world, you get like Rakshada from India, who is like this kind of mech expert, uh, you get the Four Swords, uh, like this other kind of Japanese rebellion group who join up with the Black Knights, and they are got, they've got their own cool things, they, they're mostly sword focused combat, they don't use guns like a lot of the other uh, um, nightmares do. It's just, it's so cool, it's so much fun to watch these fights play out, and it does get a little crazy later on, admittedly, uh, with the, the Gioses everybody's using, it's like, oh my gosh, it kind of blows up, because in the beginning it's a little more grounded, slightly, um, but then it kind of goes out of control uh, a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of the inclusion of one of the main characters in Season 2, he's a bit frustrating to me, but it's fine, kind of serves his purpose, I won't get specific here, but if you watched it, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, but. I just can't recommend this anime enough. If, if you're watching this still, and I don't know how long we've been going, we go like the, over 10 minutes, uh, <laughs> I just implore you to go watch it. Right now it's streaming on Netflix, uh, but you can find it a bunch of different places, seasons one and two. Like I said, I haven't seen the in-between kind of series, which kind of doesn't focus on these characters we're talking about today. They do pop up, I've heard, but it's not, you know, it doesn't really, really involve them in the same way the, the main seasons do or the subsequent follow-up movie, which I thought was going to be a series, but now is just a movie. I need to go watch that still. It's just one of the best anime I've ever watched in my life. Uh, it's got incredibly good voice acting. The plot is just, it's so interesting and uh, complicated, and it's very mature, but it's also very fan servicey. So if you're if you're looking for the waifus, I mean, they, they're there, all right? Just so you know, this is like, this is for adults. <laughs> <laughs> this show, um, keep that in mind too, because there's a lot in here. You're like, wow, okay. There's they show you a lot of um, mature things, as it were. But uh, the show never really loses its drama or its pace. And I just I, I have a hard time finding an aspect of it that I don't like. So hopefully you can check it out if you've watched it before and you love it or you don't like it. Please let me know in the comments. I would love to talk with you guys about it, where it falls maybe in your favorite anime list of all time. Like I said, it's part of the thumbnail and Lelouch is one of my favorite characters. He's just such a fun anti-hero and I just really enjoy watching him work. I think it's so cool, I really do. I also love the fact that he is really physically unfit, so if he ever has to get out of the nightmare and stuff and he can't use his Gios on somebody, he's very, like, he's gonna get beat up every time, uh, which is very funny to me. I'm like, oh, that's kinda good. Like, that's his thing. Like, Suzaku Kururugi is like this incredibly fit individual. Even out of, like, Colin, when he gets out of his nightmare, um, Suzaku can do like a, a front flip 20 feet. Like, he's, he's like crazy. He's like Batman human, you know what I mean? Uh, but I would love to hear what you guys think about it down in the comments. Also, thank you to our patrons who made this show possible. I know I've been kind of doing these on and off. If you guys want to see more of this, as I know somebody talked to me about doing more, a specific one for um, My Hero Academia, where we go season by season, please let me know. Um, just seriously, just comment down below. I'm not going to ask you to do anything else other than that. Just let me know uh, what you guys would like to see and what other anime you'd like me to see in, or talk about in the future, because I would love to. I'd love to so much. Um, yeah, you know, I'm wearing a little little uh, Johnny Young Bosch Ichigo here today, a little hollow Ichigo. Man, Bleach, what a show. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out today, and until next time, just remember to adapt and overcome. <laughs>